media, in our answer program <coughs> on the internet, with more than 4 million unique users. It's the Pat Cooper Show with his special guests, Gianni Russo and producer Jordy Belkin. Take it away, Pat. Thank you. Good evening, everybody, and thank you. Thank you for coming here with this cold weather. You got a lot of balls. <laughs> And I thank you. It's really an honor. I wish you all a happy new year. I wish for peace. Everything else is bullshit. We have peace. We're going to be fine. Now, I'm going to let off on a down scale. I hope you don't get mad. If you do, it's too late because I'm going to say what's on my mind. There's a man called Patrick Swayze who's dying from pancreatic cancer. Why don't people mind their business and let the man have his dignity with his family? Why the hell does Barbara Walters have to interview this guy that's got pancreas cancer? What is wrong with this lady? For Christ's sakes, what is wrong with this lady? you got to turn on the television and hear Barbara Walters interviewing a guy that wants to be left alone. Ladies and gentlemen, how would you like to be sitting on the toilet bowl and a man or woman walks in and says, how are you feeling? How's everything? And give up that person's privacy and dignity. And what the fuck is wrong with ABC to allow that? That's bullshit. That's bullshit. And I think Barbara Walters ought to be ashamed of herself to even attempt to do that. She ought to be ashamed of herself. Now, let me tell you about Barbara Walters. <laughs> If you say anything about Barbara Walters, she's got the view, you're not going to get on it. Fuck her and the view. That's number one. Number two. Number two. And what I'm going to say is going to boggle your fucking mind. That's how pissed off I am at this woman. She's not everything of this country. She's interviewed everybody, but it ain't enough. I swear to you. If Adolf Hitler came out of the fucking jungle, she'd be the first one to say, Adolf, let me interview you. And she'll give him a fucking this one of these. That's what pisses me off. Here's a woman who wrote a book, okay, about an affair she had with a senator who's half in his fucking grave 17, 20 years ago, and she says, I got laid by this senator. Who gives a shit? The man's gone, got Alzheimer's. He don't remember getting laid. What the hell is she writing in the book? Now, why don't somebody go on the view and tell her she's full of shit? Why? And let me tell you something. This is not God we're talking about. This is a very lucky lady that got away with a lot of crap. And I find out the older she gets, the more lonely she becomes, and the more she's interviewing anything or anybody. I would like her to interview me about my hemorrhoids. I'll give her an hour on my ass hanging off a table. For Christ's sakes, my wife, ladies and gentlemen, died from cancer. Six months I sat with my wife. She would say to me, please, don't invite anybody over. I'm ashamed because I lost my hair. I says, nobody's coming here, sweetheart. Anything you want, you just ask your hubby, you're going to get it. She says, tell my friends I love them, but, you know, I said, your friends don't understand, that's their problem. We got to worry about you. You're a young woman, we're married 44 years, don't worry. Whatever you want, we're going to do for you. And to show the dignity, I'm married to this woman 45 years, never went into the bathroom without knocking, saying, honey, are you all right? I never saw my wife balls naked. What we had humping was in the dark. Four times I was screwing the pillow and I never knew it. And that's the night she said, I never felt that good. So there's dignity. Every woman on the planet has to protect hygiene. And when you're married and a woman turns around and she has her own bathroom, it's a miracle. We never had our own bathroom. There were eight of us. Everybody peed in the same pot. Now we turn around and we got separate bathrooms. Use it for the dignity of the person that you're living with. Now, 
in case you forget what I said about Barbara Walters, don't let me repeat it. If somebody here I pray will tell her what I said, to fuck her in the view, because she's got to learn one thing. When does she get the view of understanding people's personal life? That man is today's news ain't going to make it. Now, does that make it better? Now, that's one side. Now we leave Barbara Walters and we worry about the Giants lost. What a shame. I'm so fucking glad that Philadelphia stuck it up their ass. Because if you have a football fan that had 9-6-1, and one, they were one of the worst teams, they're going to wind up in the Super Bowl. They may win it. Now, Mr. Manning, who just last year was Jesus Christ, now, for being a pisser, they gave him $120 million for being bad. I'm a genius. I can't get $35 for this fucking thing here. <laughs> but this is how sick we are. The worst thing you do, the more respect they get. The guy that ripped you off for $50 billion, he's laughing. He's in his penthouse. I still got a bitch in the hallway. This son of a bitch is in a penthouse. What's wrong with the government stopping this guy? Say, so you can't be in a penthouse. You're going to fucking jail. If you and I did something wrong, we'd be in jail. I swear to you, we'd be in jail. If he was you, Italian, you said, he didn't write don't ever interrupt me when I'm on a roll. <laughs> if I interrupt the man on the flow, Johnny, that's my guest, Johnny Russo, who, when we get to talk to him, a lot of people don't know he's a very unique man. He don't know what I think of him. He's going to find out tonight. <laughs> he's a very unique man. Now, we, we did the Giants. We did a lot of things. Now, I get questions from people. When did you know you were funny? In an Italian family, you're not allowed to be funny. You have two choices, go to work or kill somebody. <laughs> so I went to work, not knowing that I was funny. But you start to realize when you do certain things, and your mind automatically, without rehearsing, says funny things. My first marriage, 1953. I had a girl from Brooklyn, and we had a honeymoon, no money, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in New York. We were at a hotel, I think it was called the Majestic Hotel, around on 43rd Street. We had a room, I think, at those days, of like $18, $20 in those days. And we had the window open, and you know, we're still a little shy. And smoke is coming in the room, and my wife gets on the phone, there's a fire here. And I get on the phone, there's a fire here. Remember the camel sign? <laughs> the smoke was coming in our fucking room. My uncle God. And I said to the guy, he goes, no, I said, mister, that's the, that's the smoke from the camel sign. That's going to be three fucking days. He said, do you smoke? I said, yeah. Then it ain't going to bother you. Where are we going to spend a honeymoon three days? Maybe with their $200. There was a nightclub called the 